All right. Good evening, everybody, for all the troopers up in NA, maybe all the people waking up over in Europe. Thank you for joining us, and thanks to Retro Gaming Live TV for having me once again. This is Fazanadu, a Famicom remake of uh, Xanadu, which is part of the Dragon Slayer series, apparently. I don't know much more lore on this uh, than that, but yeah, I've been running this game for a long time, and I'm happy to show it off all over again. Um, Let's also just have this hype menu music go a little bit longer, and then I guess we'll jump right into it. Ooh, I've got this 28-minute estimate. That's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be tough to beat. Sub 30 is a respectable time, as uh, Toad can tell us. Toad's got a pretty good time in this. I'm gonna try to meet that 28-minute estimate, though. Been doing a uh, low percent and dagger percent, all the difficult categories. So hopefully this will be a nice breeze. Um, so I guess I guess we start our timer like when we hit start but with an 11 second offset, so I guess I'll just count us in with a 5 count here. Uh, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and start. So you press start, you get treated with this uh, very nice piece of scenery here. High level of detail in this game. This, I feel like this is kind of like the Dark Souls of NES games with the level of detail in the background. So first thing we're going to try to do... Oh, you can jump over this prologue uh, dialogue box here. I was a tad early though. Dive kicked over the back corner of the hitbox here. You can save 12 seconds. But it takes 12 seconds to watch that intro cutscene, so it's not worth resetting over. So we're gonna hold A going into this screen to make this guy jump left. Turns out there actually is a small amount of uh, RNG in this game, but what little there is can be manipulated a little bit. Yeah, it's true. This game has a very robust font engine. It's still there in the English version. Uh, you might notice when I finish talking to this guy, there's a, a speck floating in the blackness on the back left wall there. Uh, there used to be a full-on crucifix with, like, a guy hanging up, but they forgot to delete one spray. There's also, a, like, the shadow of a cross above the door of the church, but you can't see the front of it. It's kind of this Escher-like illusion. Anyway, so yeah, we just came back to our hometown. It's all deserted. Wells are drying up. Everything looked gross. Uh, so we're gonna... Death Warp, so we immediately respawn in church with full health and magic. We need to talk to that guy anyway to get the Ring of Elf, so we can go talk to the king, who, uh, we're on a first-name basis with this guy. He wants to give us some money, because we've come back. Uh, well-known exploit in this game, you can spend exactly 1500 at the shops and then come back. This guy will give you 1500 all over again, because you have zero gold. Uh, we're not gonna do that, though. We're gonna do, uh, the One King trip, One King route. We're gonna do some grinding outside of Fourpaw, the third town instead. So you can spend 200 gold to get martial arts lessons or magic lessons, but that's a big waste of money. You can, you can get meat to refill both meters for 50 above. You can easily refill your meters for only 150. Yeah, this game's got some great music in it. Not much for the way for and percussion in this game's soundtrack, but everything else is great. Actually, what am I talking about? The dungeon music is incredible. This is an incredibly intricate and syncopated piece of Latin jazz. I like to point out to people that chiptune is not a genre of music, it's merely a medium. It's a set of instruments. You can make any genre of music using the NES sound chip. Alright, so we kept up our walk speed. This game is a little bit like Zelda 2. Well, I guess it's like Castlevania in that it has a fixed jump arc, but your move speed also varies. Uh, it takes 96 frames to reach full walk speed, I think, which is double your initial speed, I believe. It works out so that if you get damage boost forwards from full walk speed, you actually net lose 10 frames. Still, that can be the fastest option. I mean, you can't really get rid of an enemy in 10 frames. Unfortunately, we dropped our walk speed there, so... Must have been holding a neutral direction. Anyway, so we're done our shopping already here. Now we got our magic equipped. Uh, there's a bit of a well-known bug in this game. Um, there's an item called the Pendant, which is supposed to permanently increase your attack power, but you accidentally start the game with the Pendant. That's a good thing that's the case, because our Dagger does 5 damage, and our Deluge does 6 damage, and these things have 11 HP. Here's the damage boost to take advantage of right there. When you connect with your dagger, you lose all your walk speed. So that's the best time to take a damage boost, when you've been forced to return to initial speed. 
So I'm trying to kill these guys in a specific way. I don't even know if this is the right recipe here. Yeah, the Cyclops walk to the right. That's no good. So I guess I'm off the recipe for RNG. Well, honestly, I don't have a good recipe yet. I don't have something... don't have something exact yet, but... I am looking for the optimal early game still. Oops, I wasted one deluge, but we should be fine. We got enough on the meter to hold 40 of them. Got another damage boost, very nice. We gotta make 2,800 gold by the time we get to four paw, which should be pretty easy. I'm gonna hold A here and hope these guys on the uh, first screen come towards me. Okay, good so far. I want to try to kill them before they touch the ground, too, ideally. Just using my iframes. Can get those nice double hits in, even though our dagger is very short-ranged. So there's hidden items on some screens. This is the first one in the game. You can visit any of these hidden item screens to rack the counter up, but on our fourth visit here, there's a secret magic. need this to bust down the little orange wall that's outside. So I'm gonna hold my A button. Good. Just how to abuse health and magic for best results here. So this screen is called Fight Club, and I didn't get a good Fight Club. If the guy up top uh, goes like left, left, right, left, right, then I can get damage boost across the top, and then both of them will follow me into the lower chamber while I get damage boosted across. Looks really sweet. That's the optimal outcome I'm hoping for. I feel unlucky, so I'm gonna hold A here. Didn't work out. If this guy goes to the left, you can get a really nice um, damage boost on involving this ladder. Gonna, oh, that's a that's a mistake and a half right there. And so is that. <laughs> um, Alright. I'm only the world record holder for this game, right? No big deal. That's probably the longest I've ever taken on that screen, but oh well. We'll go for this pixel-perfect jump over pizza head. I guess that makes up for it. So now we're gonna play some Street Fighter here. We're gonna jump over use fireballs. And now we're gonna grind this screen for 10 reps. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, the quick kill. Yeah, it could have been faster. So, grinding here- oh no. I screwed up a little bit. There we go. So grinding here uh, used to be really finicky. I was kind of trying to imitate the task, but Slackenander came up with a much safer method, which I'm doing now. It's only a little bit slower, but it's really consistent. It's all about just attack a little bit later. Like just attack as late as possible, ideally. And that's kind of what the task grind looks like, minus getting the extra health, which I didn't need there. One more rep. Oops. A little rusty there. I'm trying to bring my timer back up here. Just to check my pace. Oh, it looks like we're pretty behind. <laughs> oh well. Alright, I guess I'm missing the 11 second offset. Yeah, I'm familiar with Invarial. He's, uh, helped me find stuff in this game for sure. His new task is quite impressive, and he wants me to help me make another one. I think I will want to do that. Okay, so my health is a bit low, but I do have some surplus magic here, which I will turn into health. The other thing about the Slackinator style grind is it's much more reliable in terms of managing health and magic. I guess I had one rep where I completely flubbed, like I, I left too early. Also, if the if you notice the music dip out for a bit, it's not a glitch. Uh, I'm doing it on purpose. Um, yeah, and Varials come to my stream a couple times. Anyway. So, uh, similar to the energy zone skip in Contra, there's a... The timer that subtracts from your wing boots up on the HUD there, like the T34, that's how many... That's how long my wing boots are gonna last. 
Uh, but the, cli the, the timer to subtract from it uh, keeps going while the game is paused. So all I gotta do is pause for a few frames over top of the critical frame where it's trying to decrement from my timer, and I won't lose a wing boost second. And I'm gonna be trying to do that to make my wing boots last longer than they're supposed to. Nice, got the bees. Wing boots appearing right when we get here, right on time. So the wing boot timer's a little weird. Um, the internal clock, well, it decrements every 64 frames, and that value gets set to zero whenever I enter a new screen. So about 64 frames later, well, not on the screen with the boss on it for some reason. For some reason, the timer is much lower there. But yeah, 64 frames later, I gotta pause here, and here, and here, and I was early on the first two. Gotta pause here, and here, and get a quick ladder rejump. Yeah, you can do some janky, uh, re-climbing up ladders while wing boots are active. The input is pretty tricky, I'll try to explain it. It's like, um, you have to press A and keep holding A. You press up and then let go of up, then you can let go of A. You have to quickly like double tap up, and then you can jump again. You can reset your, your standing position on the ladder, but only while wing boots are active. I mean, you also climb ladders faster while wing boots are on for whatever reason. We managed to get our death warp before the wing boots ran out. There's an annoying little the power of the wing boots is gone dialogue box. Um, that would cost me four seconds. So because I did farming and gained more than a thousand experience, I became an aspirant when I talked to the guru here. So I not only respawn here in four paw, but also with bonus 500 gold, which is based on the rank I achieved when I talked to the guru with at least 1,000 experience. So hidden benefit to uh, doing a one king route. So on the third visit here, there's going to be some ointment, which is an item that grants me temporary invincibility. This is synced up to the same timer as Wing Boots, however, we can't see it on the HUD. I'm not crazy enough to try to ex <laughs> extend my ointment in the dark, like not knowing when the when the timer's gonna subtract. I mean, I could use Emulator with Memory Watch and the script that Invarial wrote for me to draw red boxes on the screen to help me figure it out. Okay, that was bad there, that little pause for half a second. I need to kill five Wyverns in here. I give 720 golds each. Uh, let's just get our talking over with, I guess. So we gotta talk to this guy twice. First to revive the spring, and also now that all three springs are revived, this is the guy who'll give me the Ring of Ruby and allow me to, uh, stick the cork out of the fountain. <laughs> Fix the waterworks. And that'll allow me to go to the next area. So these wyverns have 75 HP, and what I'm doing is shooting two deluges while I'm in the air. Twice, so one, two, one, two. One. Uh-oh, ointment ran out, just like I predicted. Okay, I only got body checked. It wasn't that bad. So I'm gonna do some stuff to, uh, get some health back. Stuff I've learned from running dagger percent and low percent recently. <laughs> There's little places to recover health. We need a lot of health for the next section. The next section of the run is very dangerous. We're gonna buy, uh, the weapon we're gonna use for the rest of the game. And I know the game is part of the Dragon Slayer series, and there's a big, big sword called the Dragon Slayer in this game. But we're not going to use it. You need the battle suit and battle helmet in order to equip it, but we're not going to get the battle helmet, because uh, the battle suit is a trigger for advancing the game. We're only going to get the battle suit, otherwise we'd have to farm for 1,500 more gold to get another king key. Okay, so my health is not absolutely maxed, and that, that worries me. I would like my health... I'm used to my health being perfectly full because I don't screw up my wyvern farming. 720 gold times 5 to that 3600. Oh well. Actually, since it's a marathon, maybe I'll just buy some meat. Actually, I don't think I even need to do that. We gotta break that 28 minute estimate, right? Right? 
So these orange guys are weird. I call them fencers. They they just kind of play footsies. They have like a minimum range and they'll just hit you one frame later. But what they do is they walk up to their range like one pixel away and then stop. They won't ever hit you until you walk at them. Or you can just... You slightly outrange them by just stabbing. And your stab has a lot of active frames too. You can kind of buffer it, like, you know, just stick your sword out there for them to bump into. Oops. I swear my NES controller has been acting a bit funny these days. Uh, that's more health than I'm supposed to take. I kind of took the wrong, wrong path there. This is fine though, it just means there's one less damage boost I can do. Yeah, you can even advance forward a little bit due to the knockback on your, your stabs. Alright, so coming up is the part of the run I call Ultimate Flight Plan. So you know how I was talking about wing boot extensions? And how... Um... Uh oh That's really bad. <laughs> I'm gonna take 40 wing boot seconds and make them last for about 98 in-game seconds. So, uh, I might not talk too much, because I have to focus on a lot of visual cues and stuff. Just difficult putting the controller in my lap, because i got to press the start button, and the B button, and the A button, and up on the D-pad for various conditions. I can't do this damage boost, because my health is way too low. Can't afford meat, either. I'm dropping wing boot seconds here, but this will be enough. Take a big pause here. Your, your wing boost timer keeps going when you go through doors. I'm not sure when the timer is going to decrement when doors are involved. Well, except for this one. That one just is always between the first set of lanterns. Okay, so with our 4,500 gold, we're gonna uh, deal with the four kings. Minus one. There's only three kings. By three king keys, that's how many we need to progress through the game. Don't need any more queen keys. It's kind of funny, like, there's a lot of queen doors in the game, but all of them except for one are optional. There's a lot of spooky hidden dungeons in this game. Okay. So just checking my health here. I don't think I'm not supposed to take any more hits. And I should have enough to handle the pine cone that's coming up. Yes, there there's an enemy that walks really fast and looks like a pine cone. And I will be taking a damage boost off it because it's way easier than doing anything else with it. I don't really need magic, I can afford to get sloppy there. Like, you press up B to shoot your magic, but I'm also pressing up and A to fly and stuff. Yes, I'm getting all these pauses. You can also open the menu. Timer is frozen while you're in the menu. Just pay the bouncer one deluge here, and you can just kind of walk through these guys. They have a really weird hitbox. Case in point here, I can kind of jump, like, through that guy. Hitbox on those things is kind of rolled very far forwards. Okay, great. Just have to make it to the boss with our 13 wing boot seconds. Oops. Ooh, almost got hit there. That was very scary. If I die early here, that's a loss of three or four minutes. Pause quite right there. So if I just glide, this guy shouldn't be in my way. Okay. Okay, great fight. That fight's gotten a lot easier for me since I've been doing dagger percent and like low percent. Nice, we did the entire ultimate flight plan. Didn't get power of the wing boots, dialogue box is gone. Got to fly in and out of the boss chamber, which saves, like, 15 seconds. It actually takes so long to walk around the top and then slowly go down the ladder. Big, big savings there. That's why Shiner has had world record for 10 years.
Oops. It's pretty hard to avoid getting hit by that thing. And keeping your walk speed. <laughs> <laughs> Dragon Warrior was pretty good, too. I kind of like this game a little better, though. Oh, I got flashbang. I thought I could just walk through here, but oh well. Alright, so I'm just holding the controller normally here. Oh, I forgot the buffer. Yeah, you can, like, buffer and it'll shoot a deluge, like, as soon as you get into a certain screen. Do some ladder re-jumps. Coming up is a screen that I call the impossible poison jump. It is possible to jump over this bottle of poison, but I've never done it. Man, is it hard. It's better to just bring wing boots and fly over it. And that's all we need wing boots for, for this cramped branch area. You know, there's low ceilings, there's nowhere to go fly, so we're not going to keep our wing boots alive here. We are, however, going to visit the town of Conflict. The guru here is a very important man, as a certain townsfolk will tell you. We can press B to skip the, you need peace of mind, I'll give you this password. <laughs> Oops, I forgot what I was supposed to do there. There's supposed to be a damage boost that I can do to get through there. So I got to hit an extra, no wait, I got hit the usual amount of times. So again, we have full walk speed, lose 10 frames to walk through. You, you see a faster way to get through there? <laughs> Anything faster than 10 frames to deal with that enemy? That's just the reality. Running this game is a matter of managing resources, really. Just managing health and magic. More so health than magic. Yikes. Health is getting pretty low, by the way. If I die, that is also like a 4 minute time loss. I'm gonna grab this health for safety. And I think this is first visit in this category. Yep, it is. So there's some wing boots hiding behind this foreground layer. That's right, this game can do foreground layers. It's got some pretty advanced graphics. All right, I'm gonna do some really chickeny strats with this boss. Cause I've lost a lot of runs to this boss. <laughs> I don't know why, it's no easier it's like no harder than the Black Onyx boss I just fought, but I just usually choke and can never remember the good strat. Something I should just practice. Alright, so we got the battle suit, and again we can death warp. Uh, you bring all your items, all your progression with you. Now that we have the battle suit, we can talk to the Guru of Conflate, the very important man. And he'll give us the Ring of Dwarf with an O wrong for some reason. So this guy's explaining how the Dragon Slayer works and why when you try to equip it you just get the <laughs> get the, the nope sound. We're never gonna use that Dragon Slayer though. Like I said, we got our we got our fully powered weapon systems. In fact, that magical rod we just got has changed the damage of our deluge from six to nine, made it 50% stronger. So it's more on par with the damage of our longsword, which is ten. So we basically become Twice as strong without really doing anything. Don't get any armor. Don't get shields either because um, shields and ointment don't work together very well. Shields make you take less damage from projectile attacks when you get hit by projectiles. Uh oh, I'm missing a bit of health. So when you get hit by projectiles, uh, if you have a shield, it makes this squeaky little kind of sound. But if you have ointment, ointment will not protect you from shield hits. So you're just better off not having a shield ever. Also, you can do uh, some damage boost type of stuff on ladders, like I got, you know, bonked to, to the left by that spooky pinecone. But that just put me, you know, it pushed me toward... ...toward the wall, and then I was able to just jump off the ladder. So on second visit here, there's some hidden wing boots just outside of the town of Daybreak. The second last town in the game. And yeah, we got two spare wing boots left, and that's all we need to finish the game.
Don't need to buy anything. Money just does not matter anymore. I could buy meat. I could stop at the, the church for safety, but screw safety. Oh, bees disagree with safety. Okay, let's see if we can do... Oh, nice. We got the full speed clear that Slack showed me. Trying to keep walk speed going is the great struggle of running this game. Okay, we're gonna stop by the church in Dartmoor, the final town, so we can respawn here. Do a bit of climbing, take that damage boost and jump up the ladder more. Because jumping is way faster than climbing, Mega Man knows that. Alright, time to claw the controller again. Oh, I shot the wrong thing. Whatever. I think we time her a little healthier. That is the better path. So pause here, and here, and here, and on the corner, and once your glide is at speed, and on this rectangle, and on that rectangle. See, the visual cues are always the same. Doesn't matter how much time I saved on the previous screen, the internal timer gets wound down to zero frames whenever I enter a new screen, so I can't just set a metronome for 225 BPM and pause every four beats. It won't work that way unless I never leave the screen I'm on. Oh, it's still early on that one. It's really hard to pause on this screen just because of, like, just how the timings work out. It's not worth it. Oh, oops. There we go. <laughs> 17 should be plenty here. Oh, nice, I got lag reduction. If you time your fireball press just perfectly, I really don't know the exact timing, but if you time it well, this guy will shoot only three fireballs instead of four, and that makes a lot less lag. Makes the fight go faster. Okay, we got just enough health. Let's get a move on. Three on the timer, should be just enough to get out of here. Yeah, someone calls it Daydrake, but I think everyone else calls it Daybreak. This is supposed to be the actual name of the town. <laughs> All right, we're almost done. Like, we, we took out Grieve, who's the basically the real final boss of the game. I mean, the, the actual last boss is much, much more cheap, much more unfair. However, they give us ointment right outside of the boss fight so we can just be invincible for the final battle. It's quite trivial. Wow, I just looked at my timer. It's pretty dang good. This world record is 2651. We're taking the little damage boost here. We're trying to get to the end of the game as fast as we freaking can. Okay, that one hit the correct B, so I just rose too high the first time I did it. So the Evil One's Fortress is very confusing. It is looping, but there are some some paths that just don't work correctly. Like, there's one that goes up that, like, isn't... Oh, I dropped my walk speed with a little bit of hover there. Lots of slowdown on this screen because there's five sprites on it. But we got the ointment off it, so it's fine now. So yeah, with, oint with wing boots, we're allowed to grab this ointment and then go up, which is the final boss's room. It's faster to mash here. Where time is when I stop moving time. There we go. Wow, I got a 2806. So without the 11 second offset, doesn't that mean I got like a 2757? So that's like a minute behind world record. Oh, okay. You know, it felt faster than that, but it was a pretty good run. Nailed that ultimate flight plan. I guess the biggest mistake was uh, losing an ointment second in Joker Spring there, and having to having to get more health to make up for it. But yeah, that was a nice clean run. Nice, uh, good showing of the game. I'm pretty sure that's third place on the leaderboard. So uh, yeah, how's Susanna do? Bit of a whirlwind commentary experience. 
got lots of tutorials if anyone's curious about this game. You know, if you like shopping for the first three or four minutes of a run before anything actually happens, it's a pretty good speed game. <laughs> yeah, prologue, exactly. I missed the intro skip. So that's why we went over. <laughs> you beat the game with zero gold. Um, I don't believe so. And yeah, check out the ending. We restored the waterworks, restored all the trees, and then it just takes you back to the title screen so you can do it all over again. So yeah, once again, thank you to uh, RGLTV for having me once again for, for Retrothon, for putting this on. This has been a great marathon so far. Loved uh, the Guardian Legend and Magic of Sherazad. And uh, coming up next is uh, my colleague Karma, who used to run this game too. So looking forward to her runs. Stay tuned, everybody, and thanks for watching.